this is Dennis Seiler back in the wood shop. <clears throat> Seiler Guitars, Seiler Woodworks. And I'm uh, doing the next segment on the Dreadnought guitar build with Adirondack Spruce and uh, Sinker Mahogany. So uh, in the last video, I joined the top, or the top had been joined, I routed out the sound hole, and that's where we are right now. So you see that I went ahead and cut out the sound hole uh, using the same setup that I already had for the uh, for the rosette. Uh, I just uh, set it uh, and went through several different depths until I cut all the way through. So just like everything else, you kind of have to sneak up on it. Since I'd already showed you how to set up the other tools and everything, I didn't think we needed to go there. I've also run this through the thickness sander a couple of times just to level off the surface and get this all smooth on the outer surface of the guitar. So if you see us uh, right now, we've got a piece of wood that is just about uh, a little over three millimeters thick, which is really close to where it will be. Uh, and if I were mass producing guitars, if I were building, uh, you know, mass quantities of guitars and I was trying to crank out as many as possible, to build a pretty good sounding guitar with a, with a top just by getting it to this thickness, slicking it all off on the outside, go ahead, glue braces on it, put it all together. But that's not where we want to be. Uh, and, and this is where I think one of the most crucial steps of guitar building comes in. And that is the thicknessing process of the top. The top is the engine, the tone engine of the guitar. So it has to be right. If the top is too thick, the guitar will sound dull. It won't produce enough enough volume. It won't produce enough. It won't be musical enough. If it's too thin, it might sound good for a little while, but not have the structural integrity to hold up to the pull of the strings. Um, you're talking about a lot of pull on a set of steel strings. I've heard 120 to 160 pounds. Depends on the it depends on the uh, the gauge. Uh, you can look up the statistics on that with, and look them up on the strings that you like to use and it may give you a whole new respect on that thin little piece of wood that is your guitar top holding all of that tension. And not only is it pulling, it's torquing the top. So it's, it's going, trying to rotate it this way. And the bridge, of course, is in this, and the uh, bracing on the top are, are helping it to resist that pull. So what I want is a thinner top, but I don't want to go too thin. And there's no magic number because every piece of wood is different. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what I suggest and what what uh, hand builders do everywhere is you want to thickness this top not to a particular number necessarily, but to a particular sound. You want a musical top. You want to shoot for a top that is musical. So if I take this top right now, like I have in the past, and I tap it, you can hear couple of different musical sounds, they're faint. Um, there's another way to check the musicality of the top, and that is just to hold it flat, loosely in your hands like this, and shake the top and see what kind of sound it makes. So I'm going to give it a little shake here. That's very faint. Now the sound that we're going for, uh, Robert O'Brien has a great name for this. He calls it a sheet metal sound. So if you've ever taken a piece of sheet metal and shaking it, and you get that kind of warbly sound, or if you've ever worked in a stage <clears throat> and you know what a thunder sheet is, a thunder sheet is a big flat piece of sheet metal, they shake it and it gives a sound like thunder. Well, this isn't gonna sound quite like thunder, but it is gonna have a similar musicality when shaken, once it gets to that particular thickness. So this is kind of a tedious process. I'm gonna show a little bit of it, and then I probably will jump to the end when I get it to, uh, to the thickness that I want. And again, I don't know right now what thickness this piece of wood will will eventually be. At the moment, we're right at, we're just a little over three millimeters. And that's a little on the thick side, especially for such a thick piece of wood. So at, right now, I'm just gonna, I've, I've preset this. I've been thicknessing the top up to this point, And I know that I'm not quite to the point of musicality yet. So I'm gonna turn on my thickness sander. I'm gonna turn on my dust collection system. Very important if you have a thickness sander, these things produce tons of dust. And I'm gonna slowly take this down and then I'm gonna stop from time to time and we're gonna check the piece of wood to see if we've got something that is approaching musicality. So here we go.
a very slight amount off. You want to move very, very cautiously ahead when thicknessing tops. You can, you can always take more off, but you can't put any on. So <clears throat> remember last time when I gave it that flop, there was really not much sound at all. If you listen very carefully, you might hear some. I don't even know if the sound was, was discernible on the recording. So let's see if it's any different now. A little bit, yeah, you can hear it just a little bit. Okay, so we're getting closer. So I'm gonna go again. Uh, and uh, hopefully this time we'll get something a little, a little bit more impressive. the difference now. That that's the sheet metal sound that we're going for. I think we can do a little better than that. Here's the trick. You have to keep very carefully thicknessing, measuring, and testing until you get what seems to be the optimal thickness. The problem is you want to go until it's absolutely at some point you'll pass the point of diminishing returns and the, the sound that you get off the you'll start to diminish that that sheet metal or that musicality at the top so let me turn it this way now now remember that this is not the final sanding of this top either i'm thicknessing the top but i will be sanding it uh down to 220 uh, and I'll also be doing what's called horseshoe sanding, where I will sand the perimeter of the top around the edges to loosen up the, and help this to vibrate. But I do want to get it close, as close as I can get it, realistically. And I think I can go a little bit more. So, once more into the breach. <laughs>
who are paying attention, you might have noticed that those last two passes, I didn't even really change the thickness setting on the, the sander, and that's because I'm smoothing this out. I'm getting out the irregularities and, and uh, taking off, uh, smoothing out the lumps and bumps and whatever else might be left in here. And we'll see where we are now. Let's turn it around this side. Now that's sounding good. Okay, I think that that is where we're going to be. So, at this point, I've got a top that is rough thickness. I'm going to do some final sanding on it. I'll probably test it and check it a few more times to make sure that we've got a, uh, a nice, viable, uh, lively, and musical top. And that's where, we'll, that's where we'll leave it for now. Again, thank you for your time. Thank you for your interest. And I'll see you next time.